Friday. Welcome back to Hawaii is my mainland. I'm Kawi Lucas and this is Hawaii is my mainland which is native perspectives on Earth's most isolated archipelago and today we're gonna um, go right into um, the Democratic National uh, and Local Convention. Last weekend was the Democratic Convention here in Hawaii and two return guests I have Asami Kobayashi and Cameron Sato. They were here in March and um, just um, t talking about uh, being youngsters working for, for the Bernie campaign. <laughs> and now they're back and they're both headed to Philadelphia next month <laughs> for the national convention. So they have been very successful and working really hard. So they're both UH students and uh, both had a very busy and, and fruitful weekend. Um, Cameron is now not only a delegate to the National Convention, but he is representative from Senate District 9 now. Mm -hmm. And you are also vice president of District 17-4. Wow, so you're up to your neck. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the district level, it's not that much work. Asami is also in the district council as well for her district. Cool. I'm sorry, yeah. I missed that one. Oh, yeah. it's okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm also the uh, District 23 Secretary and then Precinct President of um, Precinct 2. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, starting with you, Asami, how was the weekend for you? I would say that the convention was a real um, success for the Bernie camp. Uh, those of us who are supporting Bernie, you know, we got uh, Tim Vanderveer, a uh, progressive candidate who strongly supports Bernie as our uh, party chair. Um, we were, you know, we voted down uh, rule changes that would, you know, um, inhibit people from voting, a uh, voter suppression. And we got the Democratic Party of Hawaii to say no to superdelegates. So it was overall success for us in the Bernie camp. And what about you, Cameron? Oh, it was it was a lot of fun. I will say that it was incredibly stressful. I was also on the co-chair of the credentials committee, which was I, a lot more work than, than when I took the job. I knew, um, but you know, I was basically determining who should and should not be a delegate to the convention um, based on whether you're elected properly. And uh, it was I ran up and down that escalator like five, ten times that <laughs> that day, uh, just trying to yeah. figure things out. But, you know, it was a great responsibility and I got to understand a lot of, or meet a lot of the people who are, major, who are important in the party as well as uh, get exposed to how, who is in this party. And yeah, he who. was really busy that day. <laughs> Do we know how many people attended it? Um, we estimate 1,000 something, 1,013 was one of our final counts. Uh, yeah, I think the vote for president was um, more than that actually, 1,023, so maybe we could take that. Uh, I think there were like 33,500 something people for the PP who are in the presidential preference poll. So the, there's an allocated 1,000 delegates for the state convention uh, per the bylaws, but uh, there are more than 1,000 because that we also include the district chairs, uh, the anyone who's elected as a Democrat to office currently sitting, uh, former governors, former party chairs. So the number of actual delegates is more than 1,000 prescribed by the bylaws. And there were a lot of rules and regulations that I had no idea about and um, different ways to vote. That was all kind of um, interesting. But let's go back to those, um, those the big deals. Um, Let's have a the, show the video of um, when the resolution for um, the well. First, why don't you, um, Asami, tell me tell us what the resolution was? Okay, so um, the resolution was to abolish or eliminate super delegates because we believe that it's a highly undemocratic system. So yeah, we propose a new resolution, replace an old one, and we brought it to the floor. Okay, and getting it to the fort was a little bit of a challenge, right, Cameron? Yeah, so it was a fascinating uh, to learn about how parliamentary procedures work and how to do things correctly. But first off, we had a resolution that was shot down 
uh, so there were four superdelegate resolutions initially. Uh, all but one were shot down completely. One was uh, allowed to be entered in as a minority report. So the minority report first had to be adopted and voted on. So we had a two-thirds vote for that to get it adopted. Then after that, because we knew there was a technical problem with that, we had to ch swap out the language of that other original superdelegates resolution for a new one. So we had to print up hundreds of copies, distribute it around the uh, convention floor so that everyone could see the language. And then we had to get people to adopt that new one. And then we had to vote on it. So Did that all happen on the same day? That that green? It all happened in less than an hour. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was wow, I am really <laughs> impressed now. Wow. Okay, so those those green pages suddenly appeared. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, let's let's see the video of the Raise your yellow card. Yeah. And all of the polls, raise your yellow card. The eyes have it. So there there were some people who voted against it, <laughs> but obviously there were so many people voting for it that it wasn't by any means a, a, a Bernie Hillary issue. It was just um, people really mm -hmm. got that this isn't working and that's not, that's not the way we want to do business. Mm -hmm. um, how about the, um, the, the rule change? So, so there was originally a rule change that was set out by people who want to have a different vision for the Democratic Party is how we'll put it. <laughs> They, they want to make sure that everyone who's in the Democratic Party is truly committed, and I understand their sympathies, that they want to make sure if they're voting as Democrats, they're committed Democrats. But we believe in a slightly different vision, that we believe that the Democratic Party should be for everyone who wants to, wish, wishes to be known as a Democrat, to vote with the Democrats. And to do that, to facilitate that, uh, we, we have same-day registration in this state, and mm -hmm. we're one of the few states that has that uh, for our caucus. Um, because of that, because we had same-day registration, we believe that, the, one, the results for March 26 are different, but two, we now have like 30,000 people join the Democratic Party in the past few months. So that was, if, if our goal is to grow the Democratic Party, keeping same-day registration around is the best way we can facilitate the continued growth of our Democratic Party. And you, you worked on that? You were yes, um, so the Democratic Party of Hawaii, I, I went into their office several times to help volunteer with the data entry and everything. It was a lot of work, but um, you know, um, keeping democracy is not going to be always easy. It's, it can be a little humbug, but you know, <laughs> if we want everybody to vote, then that's what we have to do. Let's try to be a part of that. Uh, one of my favorite speeches was uh, by Bart Dame. Um, in that speech, he talked about there's a there's an element of of anarchy um, in in democracy, um, not a big one, but <laughs> but a allowing a bit of of chaos um, uh, for the greater good. And I I think we saw that in spades. Um, my name was misspelled two different ways and in two <laughs> different forms on, on ballots. And, um, uh, you know, there were, I mean, we all have stories that, that form number six. And I didn't, mm -hmm. um, where people, delegates had to commit to being, voting either for... They, they sort of had to. They were, they, they, were, they were supposedly had to fill out that form six. Mm -hmm. And a bunch of people did fill out form six, which was stating, I am, as a delegate, and declaring support for checkbox for Clinton or Bert Sanders. Uh, so we were supposed to have all filled that out. But in practicality, the people who voted for Bernie delegates uh, were just, they just had to say that. They didn't actually have to fill out the form. Mm -hmm. uh, from what I saw, there was no one actually checking a spreadsheet to see whether I had filled oh. out that form or not. Um, but it's, I mean, Bernie people voted for Bernie people, hopefully. Or <laughs> yeah. Either way, we, we were both delegates, so we're not going to complain. Yeah, I um, filled it out um, uh, weeks before the nomination when I walked into the Democratic National uh, headquarters here. I filled it out then. And then when I was waiting in line to get my badge and voting card at the convention, they s somebody came by and said, um, even if you think you filled out um, form number six, you've got to go to that line over there and check. So I did that. And indeed, it wasn't there. So anyway, yes. but really, how important is all of that? Because Right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, suppose they one 
per Clinton person or one votes for Bernie delegates, then so what? Or if one Sanders person selectively votes for different Clinton people, so what? Um, it's, I mean, for the most part, those who did wish to declare their affiliation with Bernie Sanders voted for Bernie delegates and vice versa. So, yeah. you know, the end result, I would say, looking at the Clinton side and at the Sanders side, all the people who uh, were elected as national delegates were truly, you know, were Bernie supporters and were Clinton supporters. And they deserved it. Yeah, and they deserved it. Yeah. Right. There, um, I, I w was witnessing this kind of um, tentative embrace of all the, the new energy. On the one hand, some of the veterans were, were just really excited to have you guys there. And then, but what does this really mean? And then there were a few of them who were really a little put up of it. But um, in general, I mean, how, how did you, you felt welcomed? Yes, yes, I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought that was the, the I was just so proud of the whole process by the end of the uh, of the day on 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 Sunday, mm -hmm. you know that it seemed like we really came together. Um, it, has that borne out in um, your subsequent uh, experience with now that you're now that you guys are national de delegates and working um, towards going to Philadelphia? How has the support been? Um, well, so I guess at the first meeting when we were talking about, uh, for the first national delegates meeting, uh, lots of the older people, or the people who have been to the national convention for, before, in particular Ed Hasegawa, was very helpful in clarifying what we actually did and that it's important that we, that he emphasized that we should not try and go off on our own and actually stay with the delegation, as well as clearing up that actually you're not going to be able to do the same type of floor fights and other things that we did at state convention, that it's a lot simpler. You, you vote on that one thing and maybe once or twice otherwise, but for the most part, the duty of a national delegate is a lot simpler than being a state delegate. I saw you <laughs> up at the microphone, Asami. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what were you doing? Um, so I was um, testifying um, for the resolution of the super abolishment of the super delegates. That's what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. they had that, that cute system of the red, yellow, and green flags. Yeah. I've never yeah, seen. Yeah, that was uh, Bill Pewitt's uh, flags, I believe. Like yeah. his wife made them. So if you're speaking for the resolution, then you hold up a green flag, and then if you're yeah. speaking against it, it was. You hold up a red flag, and then the yellow was mm -hmm. um, something like questions, if you point of clarification, in inquiries, yeah. and whatnot. The yeah. the main thing is that uh, when you're doing parliamentary procedure, you want to have equal support or equal speaking time for op opposition and support, so that the red flags cleared it up, so that from the stand they could tell, oh, okay, we need someone who's a supporter. Now we need someone who opposes it, <laughs> and to go yeah. back and forth. I thought the party chair, uh, Stephanie Obashigawa, did a great job of, um, you know, managing the time and then getting Absolutely. the... Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, she was great. Uh, and I, I liked the levity overall. I mean, it obviously was a, a serious thing, but there was a, a, an element of, of fun in, mm -hmm. in it all, too. Well, we are going to take a little break now and then come back and talk more about the national. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science here on thinktechhawaii.com. I hope you'll join me every Friday at 2 p.m. to discover what's likeable about science. Aloha, this is Maria Mera, and I'm here to invite you to my bilingual show, Viva Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii, every other Monday at 3 p.m. We're here to inform, motivate, and entertain you. Join us. Hola, soy María Mera y estoy aquí para invitaros a mi show bilingüe Viva Hawaii en Think Tech Hawaii cada dos lunes a las 3 de la tarde. Estamos aquí para informaros, motivaros y entreteneros. Apuntaros. Hello, I'm Patrick Bratton. Please join me every Thursday at 1 o'clock for Global Connections, where I talk to a variety of guests and range through many issues from contemporary, international, political events, things talking about national security, um, all sorts of international issues and also more local issues, history and so on. I look forward to having you join me and talking with some of my guests. Thank That's you. It, then. Welcome back to Hawaii is my mainland. I'm Kawi Lucas and with me is Asami Kobayashi and Cameron Sato, newly elected um, delegates to the Democratic National Convention and they are 
both wearing multiple other hats in the uh, Democratic <laughs> Party. And when did you first sign up for the to as a member of the Democratic Party, Asami? Um, it was actually uh, while we were still campaigning for Bernie, um, you know, before the uh, caucus on March 26. I believe I registered around August or so of last year. Wow, so not even a year. And yeah. here you are, this going is to a, Philadelphia. Yeah, oh, this is actually good. the first year that I'm eligible to vote because I'm 20, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, it's been a really exciting election year for me. Have you been waiting uh, <laughs> to be able to vote? Um, well, not until um, I found about Bernie Sanders, really. Ah. He's the one who motivated me to get out there and vote. Okay, so proof proof positive that this is... <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but not just get out and vote But herself, get involved but get, like, with the political process. Several hundred process. people yeah. to register, too. Yeah. That, that's one of the other things that our group yeah. is responsible for. At UH, we... We did a lot of registration drives, and I think we got hun several hundred new members. Yeah. That's fabulous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and they um, are, and they didn't un unregister the day after the elections. Hopefully, not that many did. Uh, there, th we actually there have no. There, there, are, there are people who are claiming that they left in droves. We, we have numbers yeah. that estimated about to be two dozen. So it's, huh. it's a very minimal number from what they're saying. You know, this goes back to the, oh, we need to have the two weeks thing or the three months. It was originally three months that you need to be a party member to weed out those people who are going to drop out the next day because they're saying that there were thousands that left the next day. But well, that's that just was, a rumor. <laughs> that, that was not true at all. Our actual evidence is that it's several dozen. That, that sounds better. That yeah. sounds a lot yeah. better. Um, I was uh, with a group of, of women who are a little, mostly a little older than I am, um, they were pondering, um, you know, well, what, you know, a little uncomfortable with this, you know, massive um, showing up at the convention of, of young people who don't have experience and, you know, but, you know, maybe we need to, you know, they need to wait a while. And I said, well, but... <laughs> How are they going to feel enfranchised, and who's going to yeah. fill the ranks if they don't? And um, I was asked, well, what do they need to feel enfranchised? And I'm just going to let you guys answer that. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, this is our part. I mean, this is we are involved. We volunteer for the party, and you know, we've taken on substantial roles with the party. You know, Asami with uh, Rezos and myself with doing credentials co-chair of <laughs> having less than nine months in the party and other people are saying oh you need to put in a decent amount of time before you're allowed to give be given more responsibility but um in terms of our commitment to the party it it shouldn't have to do with our time it's it's our work and our effort that we are committed to the party yeah, i mean some of us like we just drove in head first into those things like cameron sells on the resolutions committee i just signed up for that he was on the credentials he just signed up for that and um, we've had a lot of support from, you know, longtime Democrats, and so we were able to successfully do our part in those committees. So we're really grateful for um, those longtime Democrats who've given their wisdom and advice to us. Mm -hmm. So, um, one of the other highlights of the um, convention was the presidential election of the party, the party presidential election, which was a four-way election. And I don't think I've ever seen a more exciting uh, <laughs> political oh, election yeah. ever. <laughs> it was more like a, a, a basketball game as, as they count, <laughs> counted each of the 51 um, uh, counties. There we have it. Um, uh, so maybe somebody can explain how the allotted delegates number and all votes cast is a little... I think Cameron used okay. it. Okay, mm -hmm. so I had mentioned a little bit earlier that uh, if you look at column 51, uh, there's, there's 21 allotted delegates in 51, but it says there's 24 votes cast. That, that is p probably due to the fact that there are elected representatives. There's a district chair in that region or in that house, as well as there's probably one or two, another two uh, elected officials. Uh, so that way it can make up the total of 24. And so um, the winner clearly was... Tim Vanderveer, but there were times when um, others were ahead. Flo was ahead. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I, I, I think it's interesting. You both told me you voted for who? Flo. Flo. We went with the Flo. <laughs> <laughs> so did I. So um, it's, uh, it's, you know, there's no, you can, the generalizations aren't, um, aren't, aren't, aren't proved true necessarily. 
um, and, and why? Uh, Flo being um, somebody who, uh, she was the party secretary, treasurer, yeah, uh, treasurer, treasurer, yeah, treasurer, 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 treasurer mm -hmm. for the last couple of years. And so. executive director before that, mm -hmm. and has substantial party experience, but she was willing to, she was very open with myself as well as other people who are part of our, uh, the Bernie group, in terms of allowing us to be treated fairly and given a yeah. fair case in terms yeah. of... Uh, our representation in the party. So this is a really good example of how, um, just as a party, um, even though people had different ideas about this or that, that 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 really um, people are not doing knee-jerk loyalty. They're thinking about the issues and the and the overall well-being of the party, mm -hmm. and coming through on that. Okay, so on to Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so, what do you what do you think is going to happen, Asami? Let's just. Um. Well, at this point, well, I've never been to a national convention before, obviously, but um, we're going to see a lot of other national delegates from all over the nation, and then I think we're also going to see, you know, obviously Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton, and then we're going to vote on a lot of things to progress our Democratic Party forward. Will you guys be voting on the platform? Uh, I, so. I, not to my, not from what I've been told. Really? Uh, I've been told that there's very minimal voting. <laughs> yeah. Um, who, who does vote on the plat platform? Uh, the platform committee, from what I understand. That the, if you, unless you're on the specific committee rules resolutions platform, you're not going to get a lot to uh, actually do or participate with that committee. Mm -hmm. So part of the resolution um, abolishing the superdelegates contained a section that said, and <clears throat> we're going to send a notice of this to um, the delegates and the par uh, nationally on, in the party. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you have any idea what form that will take or how will they know that the um, thousand uh, members of the Hawaii uh, delegate um, voted for this, and, and mm -hmm. what strength does that have, of, if anything? Well, it's a resolution. So mm -hmm. resolutions are feel-good pieces of paper that actually have very little teeth. Um, well, at it, least it, it says, though, yeah. that the Democratic Party of Hawaii supports the abolishment of superdelegates. So, you know, that's like a formal document, like, declaring that, so... Yeah, it's, I mean, it, it says <laughs> what we stand for, but in terms of actually, it, in the specific language it says we urge them to vote this way uh, t in support of the popular vote of mm -hmm. Bernie Sanders and by a 70-30 margin in the state of Hawaii, that uh, it's suggesting that they do this in terms of the enforceability, it's, it's minimal, but it's a, it's a great uh, way of saying that this is the direction the party's heading in, that these are the values of the party, and that people who are superdelegates or who are considering about joining the party should look at this resolution and see that this is how we stand, and that that's uh, a way you can view how the party, what the current makeup of the party is. Do you know of other states that have done something similar? Uh, Maine has done the same similar thing. They went even further. I think they said something about uh, withholding funding for any candidate, even if, if they, mm. if they, wow. renamed it. but I mean, that wouldn't work in Hawaii because Hawaii doesn't really, the party doesn't fund the candidates very much. Oh, and it's, don't forget Alaska. So that, that makes us the third state in the nation to say no to superdelegates. So what did Alaska do? Uh, well, they passed a resolution as well, I believe. Yeah, right? I, think. I, I think so. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's we're not alone in the state of Hawaii who, who had this idea. We actually were inspired by Maine. By there was a specific uh, uh, a county convention in uh, sorry, it was a county convention in Washington that had said they're going to withhold funding. It wasn't Maine. Maine Maine was a little bit uh, was still similar to ours in terms of telling them that urging them to vote. So we in our last couple of minutes, um, I wanted to mention that. Asami, you have a, a GoFundMe campaign yes. because mm -hmm. you did one part of, of, of getting to Philadelphia that is being duly elected <laughs> with credentialed and all, mm -hmm. uh, but then it's kind of another matter to actually get to Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. So um, you're, you've 
there's all kinds of rules around who can give money to what and how. Yeah, a lot of restrictions and um, the estimated cost to go to the national convention for us delegates would be, I hear that it's $2,500. My mom did a little research and she said it was 4000 I hope yeah. that's not the case, but yeah, I mean, we're going to have to be able to afford, you know, hotel costs and, you know, transportation. And the party doesn't, and doesn't help with that? I, as of now, I, I don't think so. They, they can't help the fund it, but they can help tell us that we should get on this train at this time and coordinate amongst the delegates what we're supposed to do as a delegation. But in terms of funding, no. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm thinking that, um, all right, and, the, and in the last couple of minutes, oh, we didn't hear from you, Cameron. Oh. So what, what, what do you <laughs> think is going to happen in oh. Philadelphia? Um, it's... We're, it's going to be a lot of fun meeting all, a lot of other Bernie supporters or other people who are in positions uh, in the Democratic Party. So, you know, mingling with people who are higher up, that would be Influential exciting. Influential people. Yes. Well, I hope you two will come back in <laughs> August and, okay. and give us a report of what the <laughs> National Convention was like. Absolutely. Yes, definitely. Thanks for coming. Thank you for uh, having thank us. Thank you for having us. Bye. See you next week.